Hey everyone, Tarekith here, and I just posted a new live set I did with the Roland MC707, the Hydrosynth, and the OB6, um, called uh, Coriolis is the name of the set. And I've been getting quite a few questions from people about how everything's organized, how to perform the set, um, which piece of gear is playing what sounds and all that kind of stuff. So um, I just wanted to do a quick video here to kind of just dive into a little bit how things are organized, how to perform the set, um, and just show you how things are laid out so I can answer some of those questions. Um, so let's change the camera angle, get a little closer in on the gear, and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, here we are once again zoomed in on all the gear. Um, again, this is the Roland MC707, the sequential OB6, and the ASM Hydrosynth. Um, the basic setup is pretty simple. If you've seen any of my other videos on my, my 707 live sets, I keep the same kind of formula for how I organize things. Um, the 707 is the main sequencer. Uh, track 7 is driving the Hydrosynth, and track 6 is driving the OB6. Um, the outputs from all three pieces of gear are going into my RME UFX Plus. Um, in the past, I've routed the Hydrosynth, I'm sorry, the Hydrosynth and the OB6 into the 707 and use it like a mixer. Uh, it works great for that, but there is a little slight degradation in the sound quality. Um, I'd have no problems using it for live use or even probably for most studio things, but I put a lot of effort into the set and I wanted to record it as pristinely as possible. So it's everything's going directly into the UFX uh, and, and captured separately. Uh, Again, I don't have MIDI control set up on tracks 6 and 7 other than for the notes being sent to the synths. So to control the overall volumes of the OB6 and the Hydrosynth, I'm just using their main volume knobs instead of the faders. Um, I'm sure it's possible to do it with the faders to have these send uh, MIDI CCs, probably CC7. Um, I just didn't have a chance to dive into it before I started the set. Uh, it kind of came together really quickly at the last minute, so I wanted to jump on things and just started recording when I was ready. Um, again, so track 6 is the OB6, track 7 is the Hydrosynth uh, for the entire set. Um, the other tracks, track one is my bass drum and my snares, uh, track two is all percussion sounds. Um, you know, I'll do some stuff so you can hear what it sounds like. Um, this is just track one, muted, unmuted. My percussion sounds. Track three is cymbals and hi-hats. Track seven is bass lines. Uh, the 707 did all the bass lines in this set. Um, some people thought actually it'd be the OB6, but I like the 707 for bass lines. It's got a really deep low end. I have no problems with the synth engine in this. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and then the last track is track 8, and again, that's the 707, and that's usually doing like pads and textures and things like that. Kind of more ambient things. Basically everything on track 8 usually has like tons of delay and reverb on it. Um, and that's kind of how I transition from one song to the next a lot of times, um, which I'll get to get into here in a second. But um, So that's how all the tracks are laid out. Um, if you're familiar with the 707, or I guess more appropriately, if you're not familiar with it, um, projects are organized kind of like Ableton Session View. Um, so you have eight tracks, and then you have a horizontal rows, which can be uh, basically, let's call it a scene. Um, and each scene can be its own song. That's kind of how I have it set up right now. So these are all the scenes with everything I muted, so you can hear just how it sounds like full on for each song. Like these are just complete, like mostly eight bar loops, um, but then I'll perform them a song with mutes and un unmutes and things like that. So that's one track. There's an X track. Uh, here's another one. Uh, so anyway, yeah, those are the eight songs that made up the Coriolis that I just performed. Um, usually I get about eight songs, gives me about half an hour of performance time. Um, it just, I have a short attention span, half an hour is like a good length for me. Um, so the basic way I perform the set then is, let's say I will go ahead and, and I'll be muting things to build up the track, break the track down. Um, again, track six is the OB6. So you can hear what the OB6 is playing in this song. Gotta love that filter. Track seven is a hydrosynth. Doing some kind of textury stuff. And then let's say I want to go to my next song. So I've got, I've broken the song down, I've played it all, and now I'm getting ready to transition and I've got these three elements going. Um, what I'll go is go into clip mode. Oops, I gotta... Sorry, I messed that up here. So let's try this again. 
So this is the first song. I have these three elements down, tracks seven, eight, and track one. Um, then I'll go into clip mode. And these green lights are all the tracks that are currently playing, uh, current, the clips that are currently playing um, in the first row. So now I'll select clips in the second row. And they're muted so you don't hear them, but now I can unmute them. So I've got the bass drum from the first song and the percussion and hi-hat from the second song. And of course I can use the faders to bring them in and out too, like if I do slower transitions. Uh, let's bring the pad sound on track eight from the next song. Unmute it. So anyway, that's the basic idea. Um, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned uh, track five is also uh, the 707, and that's typically like my lead sound, like my core synth sound. Um, that is mostly for my 707 only sets. Like in this case, sometimes the OV6 has a stronger sound or the Hydro synth has a stronger sound. And I just kind of decide that on the fly. So um, these three tracks typically are kind of melodic and I can kind of play with that depending on what the, the mood of the song is. Um, the base of the knob assignments, uh, typically the third row of knobs on everything is set to delay send. Um, I, I usually only use delay send or reverb send for these. Um, the second row can be kind of depends on the actual individual patch. Um, for most of the percussion sounds, it's like um, the release time. And then the first row of knobs is just the standard filter for most of the patches as well. Um, on the 707, when I'm creating my sets, I use the randomized preset a lot. I just kind of hit that over and over again until I get something kind of close that sounds cool. Um, that way I know it's totally unique, you know, I'm not going through, you know, boring presets that are built into the unit. And some of them are quite good, but there's some boring ones too. I just get better results with randomize. Um, and sometimes when you do that, this first filter knob will get assigned to like syscontrol1, which is like, can be assigned to anything in the mod matrix. So I don't always know what knob1 is going to do, and you know, sometimes it leads to really fun experiments when you're playing live. Uh, but again, so let's see, we are kind of mixing and matching here. Um, I've got some sounds from... Two different songs playing at once now. Let's unmute some of this stuff. So this is just the OB6 from song from uh, song number two. Here I can actually go through and just play like, all the OB6 sounds so people can hear what OB6 did in the set. So that song's two OB6. This is the OB6 sounds from song three. In this case, kind of this trippy pad thing. This is song four on the OB6. Song five on the OB6. Kind of distorted, off kilter thing. More kind of OB6 stuff, you know, that kind of stereotypical filter. Uh, song 7 on the OB6. And then song 8 on the OB6. I don't know why, this always reminds me kind of of Boards of Canada for some reason. Uh, and then the Hydrosynth. Let's do track 1 on the Hydrosynth. Uh, let's go to track two in the hydrosynth. And one thing I should point out is all of these clips in here, they actually can have individual sounds if you want on the, on the 707. So even though you've got them all in the same track, every single clip in that track can trigger a different sound. Um, and in this case, each clip can also send a program change. That's how it's telling um, the OB6 and the Hydrosynth what, song, what sound, sounds to play for each song. So when I trigger a new clip, it sends a program change first to the synth and then the new sound starts. So I don't have to worry about selecting the right synth patch um, as I'm performing, it happens automatically. So again, this is the Hydrosynth on song two. Hydrosynth on song three. 
Um, kind of upsettingly, I, I, I love that sound. I spent a lot of time creating that sound. And when I actually was performing this set, you can see it if you go back and watch. Right when I started bringing that sound in, I accidentally muted that track and when I meant to mute the OB6 track. Um, so I spent all this effort creating the sound. It's probably one of my favorite sounds in the set on the Hydrosynth, and I used it for maybe 20 seconds. It happens. Uh, okay, Hydrosynth on song four. Again, just some kind of off-kilter things. Song five. Uh, this is Hydrosyn on song six, which is actually playing the exact same sound from song five. Um, I just copied it. I liked it. It worked for both. It helps with the transitions, just in that case. Uh, let's see, Hydrosynth Song 7. Yeah, another really cool sound I spent a lot of time on. I like this one. It might have been actually originally one of the factory presets I kind of tweaked to fit the sound of the set. Um, I don't remember exactly. Um, just like I like using um, the randomized preset on the 707, the Hydrosynth has an even more powerful randomized preset function that I use that as well. Like It's just easier for me than scrolling through presets or starting from scratch. I can just hit this button over and over again to be like, oh, hey, that's unique, that's interesting, let's start with that. Uh, and then finally, the Hydrosynth on track 8. Kind of a fizzy pad. It almost sounds like the OB6 in this case, um, but that's the Hydrosynth, so... Anyway, that's what the OB6 was doing and the Hydrosynth was doing in the set. Um, that's how everything's organized and layout, how I perform it. Again, I'm just kind of going from top to bottom in, in this project view on the 707. You know, I'll play some parts when I'm done, I mute them and I select the next part below it and I unmute it either just immediately to kind of bring that sound in immediately or I can like fade it up with the faders if I want to kind of slowly introduce it. Um, in this set, I was kind of going for more like an ambient feel with, with some heavy beats over it. So there was a lot more kind of volume fading in and out than I, would, I normally do for like my harder sets. So. Um, the other question I've been getting a lot about is actually how I have everything kind of laid out here, organized, the stand I built. Um, I really wanted everything kind of as compact as possible and at the right angle um, for me when I was performing it. So I actually went and built a custom wood stand. So I was going to break this stuff down today anyway. So let's just kind of power everything down and I'll show you what that looks like underneath. So it'll be six on top. Oops. Don't do that. <laughs> $2,000 synth falls on the floor. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of see, I've got these little slats here to raise everything up with rubber feet. Um, actually, I think this was an old mouse pad I flipped upside down and hot glued to the wood. Um, it's super sticky, nothing slides around. Um, I also have a passive USB hub in here. I'm fanatical about backing things up every day when I'm done writing um, the set. Um, this way everything's all wired up uh, all the time with USB and I only have one cable to go into my USB hub. Um, that way when I'm done I can just back everything up. Uh, the same thing with the power. Um, I've got like a little power strip in here. Everything's plugged into. That way when I'm ready to play with this I only have to just plug one cord in. Um, kind of the one flaw with all this is actually um, all the actual individual power strips in this case, or uh, sorry, audio cables in this case because they all have to feed into the UFX. So. Um, that was one thing I couldn't simplify. Um, initially, I had everything going into the 707 like I like I talked about, and then it was only one stereo pair from the 707 into my sound card. So there's that without the 707. And without the Hydrosynth. So anyway, it's just this thin piece of wood I built with some risers to put everything exactly where I want it to go. Um, and then this is kind of, you know, rubber pad so nothing slides around. Um, the other thing I did you can't really see here is the whole bottom of this is lined with felt. That way, I mean, this is my main studio desk and I, I have another table on the side I can slide things over. But when I don't want to do that, I can just slide it right back out of the way and it's not going to scratch up my desk. Um, I can even slide it back pretty far when everything's fully weighted. Um, it's not going to tip over or whatever. And then I got my laptop here to do my mastering work or whatever. Uh, so yeah, that is a quick breakdown of how everything's organized, how I've laid everything out, how I've got everything kind of set up on this little stand I made. Uh, hopefully that answers all the questions people have. Um, if you have any more questions, just let me know and I'll answer them in the comments. Thanks.